I got to tell you guys, um, in today's broadcast, you guys are about to see one of the most chilling polls that you have probably ever seen in your entire life. And the reason I say that is because this particular poll was conducted after Joe Biden gave his anti-MAGA Republican speech where he called all of us who support the former president of the United States extreme threats to democracy. Well, this poll was taken shortly after that and what it has to reveal to you is jaw dropping. Now that said, there are parts of this poll uh, that are going to make you smile ear to ear because there is some good sides to it. However, there is an extremely dark side specifically by Democrats Democrat views that you absolutely cannot risk not seeing. Uh, but as a quick reminder, I want to remind you guys to get on over to RestrictedRepublic.com. I started this website because of all the junk that we are seeing from liberals and Democrats, how they are calling us white supremacists and labeling us as uh, racists and xenophobics and now an extreme threat to society. You guys want to start checking out places like Restricted Republic public, especially in light of everything that's going on. And right now I'm giving an amazing special of $3.99 per month. I'm not going to run this much longer uh, for the entire first year. This barely uh, doesn't make us hardly any money. I just want you guys to get over there, check out the content, and there's a free 14-day trial and you can cancel whenever you want. You're not held on there forever. Amen, obviously. But we've got exclusive video content that you're absolutely going to want to check out. And I'm putting out a bombshell report there today. But with that, let's get on over to this chilling poll that you guys absolutely have to see. But before I do, I want to remind you of, 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 of uh, oh, I was going to say, oh, Biden, a Biden's speech, soul of the nation, just the date that it happened on. So then we can follow through. This was just before that poll was taken. And here it is. This is the YouTube channel for the White House. Uh, you can see right there and you can see his Soul of the Nation speech. And I want to show you the date. It was live streamed on September 1st, 2022. Now, this poll, as you're going to see next, is Harvard Caps Harris Poll. It was put together by the Center for American Political Studies at Harvard University, C-A-P-S. And the date that they just published it or put it all together is September 7th through the 8th, 2022. So right after Biden gave his speech. But here's what it states, their survey method. This survey was conducted online within the United States from September 7th through the 8th, 2022. Among 1,885 registered voters by the Harris Poll and Harris X. So they, um, in in this poll, they surveyed about 2,000 people to get their results. So it's a pretty good chunk of people to get a good idea of what's going on. Let's start with some of the good news. Let's look at here. Uh, and this is on page 20. And here it is. Most say they have doubts about Biden's mental health fitness. This is great news because I think everybody in America actually knows that. Is Joe Biden mentally fit to serve as president of the United States or do you have doubts? The one in blue there, 44% say he is mentally fit, yet... 56%, which is far more than the majority, believe that he is not mentally fit. And you can see the Democrats, of course, have an 82% mark. So 82% uh, of Democrats think he is mentally fit. But as far as independents and GOP and Republicans are concerned, he is absolutely not. And then you can see the reverse over here. Do you think Joe Biden is showing signs that he is too old? 63% believe he is too old, while 37% percent believe he is fit to be president again this is this one's interesting uh, because even 33 percent of Democrats, which is far higher than those who said he had mental issues. 33% of Democrats even admitted to the fact that he was too old. So I thought that was interesting to show you, but let's move on a little bit. Uh, Democratic Party approval has closed the gap now at 47%. So their approval level is, is, is kind of closing in on the GOP. The great news is, is the GOP is still ahead. And here we are, GOP approval remains just under 50%, which means we are much higher than the Democrats. 
Democrat Party. Now, here's another one here uh, that I also thought was interesting. Trump is a clear favorite in a prospective GOP primary. DeSantis is now the clear runner up. If the Republican president primary for the 2024 election was held today, who would you vote for? A majority, 59% still say Donald Trump, despite the fact, by the way, that Biden went to his pulpit and labeled us all an extreme threat to democracy. Many of us still believe Donald Trump is a runner. And if Donald Trump did not run, the next person in line would be Ron DeSantis. Now, I can't, I'm just going to say this out loud. I can't stand Mike Pence. I, I, I can't stand the guy. So I really hope to goodness sake that he doesn't get in there whatsoever. But I do like Ron DeSantis and obviously Donald Trump. Here's another thing. In the Democrats, the same question was asked, uh, is Biden the favorite? And Biden is your favorite. Harris is the runner up for Democrats. It shows if the presidential election was held today, Joe Biden is the main and next would be Kamala Harris and then Bernie Sanders. I thought that was interesting. Now, if we take out Joe Biden, who would be your next one? Kamala Harris and Hillary Clinton. There she is again. She's back in the running. I thought that's hilarious after two failed uh, big efforts there. And then here's one more I want to show you uh, because I also thought this was interesting. Another good sign for us. Trump wins in a hypothetical uh, versus Biden or Harris in the 2024 election for president. If it were held today between Trump uh, and Joe Biden, who would you go? Who would you vote for? And you could see 45% Donald Trump. And even if it was held between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, 47% went to Donald Trump. And if it was held between Ron DeSantis and Kamala Harris, you can see there. Actually, this one's terrifying a little bit. Kamala Harris won the battle. I really hope they don't put her up either. But there's the good news. There's some of the good news uh, that I thought I wanted to share with you now. Now that we've covered the good news, let's get on to the bad news because I think this is the part that really is going to chill you to the core. All right, here it is. Uh, and here is that same Harvard poll. It states, most voters think that the number of dangerous MAGA Republicans is grossly exaggerated. Okay, that's good, right? But it, it expands. It says, do you think there are tens of millions of dangerous MAGA Republicans backing violence and trying to overthrow the Constitution? Or is that a gross exaggeration or distortion? And 46% to me, that number is way too dang big, but 46% believe that there are, as in yes, there are tens of millions of dangerous MAGA Republicans. Only 54% believed that that was a gross exaggeration. This is chilling to my core. It's, it's almost near a 50-50 split. The question that I have to ask myself is, you're not seeing violence breaking out anywhere in the country regarding that. So why are they believing such a gross exaggeration? And what's even more terrifying is this little section right here on the right uh, that I kind of got highlighted a little bit there. And here's, here's where it breaks down even worse. It says, according to Democrats, right? 73% of Democrats believe that there are tens of millions of dangerous MAGA Republicans, 73% of them believe that, of Democrats. And the other chilling thing is 42% of those who don't associate with Democrat or the Republican Party, your independent party and other party, 42%. Why would large chunks of people believe something like that, even in the Democrat and even uh, the independent parties, why would they believe that when there are no violent outbreaks of MAGA Republicans or extreme threats of any nature happening across this country. Now, that was not the case before Joe Biden gave a speech, but now suddenly it's concocted an entirely new fear in the Democrats that should never, it never, never existed. But it goes on to say some other things. Uh, Biden labeling of Trump and MAGA Republicans as an existential threat and semi-fascist is seen as inappropriate. Okay, so they see it as inappropriate, but yet they believe it, right? But here it is. Is it inappropriate or not inappropriate or not appropriate for Biden to call former Trump and his supporters an existential threat to American democracy? 48%, again, that's terrifying. 48% thought it was appropriate. 
appropriate. Only 52% thought it didn't. And then again, your breakdown between Democrats and Republicans and GOP kind of follows the same line as the prior, where 73%, 77%, that's even higher percentage of Democrats, thought it was actually appropriate for him to label us an existential threat and semi-fascist again. So why now? If they thought it was appropriate to do, why do they think it's appropriate to do when there is no violence happening? And my answer to that is the mainstream media who has been concocting this lie over and over and over again, calling conservatives and Christians and Republicans, xenophobics, racists, deplorables, white supremacists, Nazis. These are all terms that they've used against us to domestic t terrorists of the state or um, yeah, domestic terrorists of, of the state into now an extreme threat. You see how more vile and vile and vile the rhetoric gets, right? His speech was very, very divisive. In fact, I would, I would hope 90% of America thought that his speech was divisive, but again, that's not even close, right? It was far less than that. Take a look here again at that poll. Voters think Biden's speech was divisive and engaged in fear mockering. Okay, does such a speech help the country unite and move forward or does it divide? 40% of people believed that it helped unite and move forward against 75% of those being Democrat and 46% thought it was justified. Wow, mainly Democrats. What are their radical beliefs are Democrats harboring about their once friends, I will say, it's so divided anymore, but what are they now, what other secrets are they harboring about Republicans to the point where they think one of the most divisive speech in US history was somehow not divisive and unifying? Unifying maybe to their own party, right? Unifying to their own party party. One last thing I want to show you on that. Um, well, let's just let's just dive into this other article. One other thing I want to bring up about Democrats is they're not they're not Democrats anymore. Those charts that I just showed you how 75% or 73% believe that there is violence breaking out by MAGA Republicans and they should be fearful of that, right? Um, that it wasn't exaggerated, that MAGA Republicans are dangerous. They believe that we're actually dangerous when we're not. I am against violence in all shapes and forms. A majority of, of people are on both sides of the fence, but somehow there's now this innate fear in the Democrats, a fear that I believe the upper Democrats want and the upper socialist and communists want in order to get their party to accept certain restrictions that they never accepted before. Here's what I'm talking about. Here's one of those restrictions. And I want to remind Democrats listening, and I encourage you to remind your Democrat friends because this is a very powerful video. Take a look at this article. And it's basepolitics.com. Opposing the Patriot Act was once a progressive leftist war cry. Today, Democrats embrace U.S. security state more than they ever have before. I want to remind Democrats, the old Democrat who used to actually be a Democrat was against a surveillance state. They hated the Patriot Act. They were against the government. Uh, they, they were for freedom of speech. And today they have gone full blown full-blown totalitarianism. And I'm going to show you that by the end of this report, which basically means government control over everything. Let me go back uh, to that article there here. And this is a very powerful article, but here's what it states. A 2011 Research Center poll showed that the number of Democrats who believed the Patriot Act was a necessary tool had gone up by 10% from only 25% in 2006 to 35% five years later. So if we go back really Really early on, the percentage of Democrats accepting the Patriot Act were very, very low. Today, however, Democrats are evenly split with half supporting the Patriot Act and half opposing it. A Tufts University poll published in March 2021, three months after J6 2021 attack on the Capitol, revealed that 44% of de Democrats, 24% somewhat and 20% strongly, support a new Patriot Act, while 44% of Democrats, 22% somewhat and 22 strong, oppose it. That is an even split with Democrats. 
even split, which means they want surveillance, they want people to do warrantless searches, and they're fully and utterly okay with this. Half of the Democrat Party, but that's not all. A 2021 Pew poll also showed that Democrat support for government censorship had spiked dramatically since 2018, from 40% to 65% in support in only four years, four years. And Republican support had plummeted during the same period. Four years, four years. So they go from not wanting the Patriot Act to 50% of them supporting full surveillance of the masses, full government control of multiple aspects of our lives, and nearly, and 65% of them now want to censor and completely eliminate the First Amendment. That's what happens when you allow the government to censor free speech. I really love what Glenn Greenwald had to say in a Twitter feed that he put out very recently on September 17th. I think this is a very, very powerful point for all Democrats to listen to, and here it is. Note how often Democrats demand not only the censorship of their political opponents, that's you and I, and that's every day, but also call for their arrest by FBI and prosecution by the DOJ. They've gone massively radical. They depicted Trump's 2016 lock her up chant as Hitler-esque, and now they want every Republican except Liz Cheney imprisoned. He goes on, one of the most overlooked political changes in the past five years is how much Democrats have come to worship, revere, and trust the U.S. security state, especially the FBI and CIA, while Republicans regard these agencies with extreme distrust and contempt. Democrats love the security state. And he puts up uh, these charts here. It says 2019 to 2021. Here's Democrats rating for the federal government. In 2019, you can see, and we're gonna to go to the main agencies here that we're now focusing on the FBI, right? They're about the same actually on the FBI. But if you look at Department of Homeland Security, it was 42% approval rating, now it's up to 61. And the CIA is at 55% before and is now at 61. This is intriguing. You can see some of the other agencies here uh, where they used to not be so trusting of, of FEMA and now they're up to 61%. On average, it's anywhere between 60 to 75%. And here's another chart here on Republicans, okay? And you can see here the 2019 and the 2021 are flopped. Uh, but in 2021, we only have a 26% trust rate in the FBI. Back in 2019, we only had a 46%. Same with Department of Homeland Security. Today, we only have a 24% approval rating. Back then, we had a 65%. And we're talking 2019. 2020, 21, just in a matter of a couple of years. This is the massive difference between Republicans and Democrats. Back then, when Democrats uh, didn't trust some of these agencies, uh, back in 2019, they didn't trust them as much as they do now. I would have sided with the Democrats on a lot of these things. I would have sided with the Democrats back then on the Patriot Act. I hate Bush, by the way, but he goes on to state this. That's why it's such an absurd joke when corporate media and Brooklyn-based liberal digital sites claim him, Glenn Greenwald, has changed and am now somehow a right-wing pundit, and he's not. He, he used to be very hardcore uh, on the other side, but since the other side has switched sides with the Republican Party, you see a lot uh, in a lot of aspects because the other side has, com has, has become completely totalitarian. They're going totalitarian. That's what they're after, and they don't even realize it. A lot of them don't, but that's where they're headed. And Glenn Greenwald sees it, and he says, I don't want to be a totalitarian. I'm siding with the Republicans because they at least got their head on their brain, uh, at least now. And here it is. He shows another chart. Partisan divisions have widened over role of government, tech firms in restricting misinformation. The U.S. government should take steps to restrict false information online. And you can see in 2018, uh, both Republicans and Democrats were all against it. We were on an even field. No, they should not be able to restrict our freedom. Today, uh, we have less trust in big tech and Democrats are up to 65% saying, yes, censor us, yes, censor us. Okay, tech companies, let's look on the chart farthest uh, from my face there, uh, to the far right of the screen. Tech companies should take steps to restrict false information. 76% of Democrats believe that when uh, uh, back in the day, it was only 60%. It massively exploded and massively declined for the Republican Party. 
chilling to the core. Bottom line, the Democrats of today are no longer the Democrats they used to be. They are turning into totalitarians. And let me show you the definition of that because I thought this many of you may know, but in case there are some Democrats out there that might need to see it for themselves, here it is. And here's the definition of or relating to a centralized government that does not tolerate parties of differing opinions and that exercises dictatorial control over many aspects of life. Exercising control over freedom, over will, over thought of others, authoritarian, all right? And this is exactly what's happening. The Democrats all pretty much in agreement said, you're gonna get the vaccine whether you want to or not, I don't care about my body, my choice, you're doing it. This is going against the will and freedom of the people. Right now, they're also saying, we want people censored off the internet. We want you to control speech and what is and isn't said. We want the Patriot Act. We want you to be able to surveillance everyone and anyone in the name of saving the planet. They always fall victim to, to security in the name. They fall victim to safety and security and they're willing to give up their freedom uh, at that. And so now they're just saying, government, take care of it all, do it all for me. Well, I think we should technically rename them totalitarianists, totalitarians, uh, because that is exactly what they're doing. And by the way, Joe Biden has made it very clear that he only wants one political party. Again, part of the definition of totalitarian, they do not tolerate parties of differing opinions. Biden made that very clear with the speech that he gave that day on Soul of the Nation, where he said MAGA Republicans, 70 some odd million people in the United States are somehow an extreme threat to society. In other words, he wants one party rule. And many Democrats are sadly not against that. Anyhow, wanted to bring you all of this information. I think it's very, a very powerful report uh, that you absolutely need to see. But with that, please don't forget to check out my partner, at getthetea.com forward slash Lisa. Uh, by the way, if you go directly, you can go to getthetea.com, but if you go directly to getthetea.com forward slash Lisa, you can take advantage of this special offer. Alley beads, oh gosh, it's one of my favorite smells, but it's a beet and garlic dietary supplement. And this is really good because it has D3, it has zinc, it has vitamin C, all of these things, and it helps support your immune system and your cardiovascular system, something that we all need. It helps also promote healthy blood pressure. Uh, but check it out right now. And if you use the coupon code LISA32, that's LISA32, uh, then you can get this at a discounted rate of $32. It's about $8 off the product. Uh, so. So support me today by checking out AllieBeats.com. If you're going to get supplements, might as well not do it in a way to support what we do here. Anyhow, I love all of you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven signing out.